Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation about what are Google's core Web Vitals metrics. Uh, my name is Russ Jeffrey. I'm the Director of Strategic Integrations at Duda. Uh, I've been at uh, Duda for eight years, and I've got some deep experience dealing with the SEO industry and, and also the uh, speed metrics that Google is now putting out directly. So what I want to cover today uh, is one is, is what, what are experience metrics and what is a good experience? I think it's important to understand what, what is a kind of how Google is measuring experience and what that actually means. Then we'll dig into what core web vitals are. Uh, after that, we'll dig into uh, other experience metrics that Google relies on and how it relates to the bigger SEO picture. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of data about how uh, what is the state of web vitals on the web. And then finally, how web professionals uh, themselves should view web vitals and, and leverage web vitals to their advantage. So. Uh, the first thing I want to cover is, is what is a good experience? And this obviously is an objective question. I might have a good experience somewhere and you go to that same place and you have a poor experience going there. And this is obviously a really hard question to answer as a whole. And so what Google is trying to answer and kind of put metrics for is what are those things that we know we can reliably measure and we know are good indicators that this is a good experience, or, or we know that if they don't hit these metrics, it is a poor experience no matter what you do. So when you go to a website, something along the lines of how quickly do I see something? How quickly am I able to interact with that and view that? Do I know something is happening when I first go there? What about when I, how long am I waiting and, and what kind of experience do I have when that waiting is happening? What about when I touch it and tap it and interact with it? Does it smooth? Does it respond? Is it laggy? Um, does the page seem like it's janky and jumping around? Uh, or what about when it's loading or I'm browsing around the page and something pops in? What is that experience? Do I have to shift my eyes to follow items on the page? So Google is trying to put metrics around these type of questions to answer these directly. Obviously, there are other things that deliver a good experience on the web that Google is not encompassing. There are a wide range of other things that could be measured or even things that can't be measured that are much more subjective uh, as well. Like the copy you use on a button is obviously part of experience, but there's no way Google can measure for, is that copy the right copy on a button? Is it clearly indicating what I'm actually doing? So they're doing things that they know they can measure. And I think that's important to set out from the beginning. Now, general UX best practices you know, have, have something along the lines of when I'm touching something and it responds immediately or in under a second, uh, then, then I don't need to show any kind of loading indicator. And I can actually go and just start, you know, tapping and scrolling and using it. And I don't need to, you know, have any type of indication that something's going to take a long time. Google is using the same number, this 0.1 seconds, as what's called the, the FID. And we'll get to what that actually means in a second, but it's, it's interactivity. How quickly do I touch it? And I know something is happening. Uh, in terms of actually, you know, when I click on something and I go to a website or how quickly I expect it to load, the human brain starts to lose focus anywhere after one second. It really is that quickly. Most humans will lose interest by about four or five seconds. And after 10 seconds, you've lost nearly everyone uh, who's ever wanted to visit your website. So when you're loading a website, it really does need to load quickly. And Google is, is very much focusing on that loading experience and how quickly do I see something on the page uh, as, as coming up and, and being regular. And these aren't you know, numbers that Google is pulling out of the air. These are well-known kind of best practices for how humans interact and how well you know, humans are able to pay attention to what's in front of them. The reality uh, today is that the web is just much slower than, than humans are. Humans are gonna lose interest and the web doesn't actually keep up with that. So Google is really trying to push and move people towards a better web uh, and they're doing that with these web vital metrics. So let's jump on uh, to actually what these metrics are one by one. So uh, the first one is looking at loading speed. And Google is using that same metric of great. We want three to four seconds as the best practice. So if you look here, anything less than 2.5 seconds is considered good. And this is for what they call is the uh, LCP, which is largest contentful paint, which is saying, how long does it take for the biggest thing on the page to load? Is it a text block? Maybe it's an image, uh, could be your navigation. All of those types of things are, are very common as a, a largest contentful paint. And they want that largest thing to load in under 2.5 seconds, if not faster, um, that's there. The next one is looking at interactivity. That's that touch and scroll. If I go and touch, do I have to wait 
we've all had an experience where you've touched a page and nothing's happened. You scrolled and it just doesn't move. And that's because uh, usually there's code running that's blocking you from scrolling uh, in some way. And so this interactivity is saying, when I touch it, does it happen instantly? So if you go over 0.1 seconds uh, of waiting, then humans are gonna notice that from a delayed response perspective. And so you need to keep that under from the first input. Google's measuring this as what's called the first input delay. So it's the first time somebody taps the page uh, that's there. Uh, uh, they don't measure it after the first, they're only measuring that first experience. And the final one is CLS. What they're measuring with CLS is visual stability on the site. So visual stability is when something's loading and if I have something that's there, if it moves, uh, that is counted as unstable <laughs> items on the page. And so Google is trying to measure um, how much things shift on the page that's right in front of you. The, the CLS is, is a cumulative layout shift. It's basically a metric that Google invented to say how much do things shift on the page. And we don't want to have anything total more than 0.1 of this metric. Um, that's there. We all have had that experience of going to a page, maybe it's a news or a publication, and an ad loads and everything gets pushed down the page lower. And I have to shift where I'm, where I'm looking and my visual cue that's there directly. So you don't want to have any of these shifts. These three metrics here, these are the core web vitals that Google is measuring. And these are what Google is going to be inputting into their search ranking algorithms coming up here in May. So these are the, the three that are there. Now, Google does already have other experience metrics out there. So you can see they're using things like the mobile friendly test of great. Is this site mobile friendly? Uh, and they have a number of checks kind of underneath that of, does it obviously resize? Is there anything expanding past the mobile frame? Are buttons or links too close together? There's a number of things in that mobile friendly test, but it, it, it's another experience indicator that's there. Safe browsing is there. Great, is this a malware site or is it a phishing site? Uh, they have HTTPS. We all know this as having a secure site. Um, and finally, this intrusive um, interstitials, which is, is there a pop-up? Is there some overlay preventing me from getting to the content? These are other experience metrics that have been out since, I think they started introducing some of these in 2013 or 2014. Uh, so they've been around for quite a while and they're not new um, to have. Now, obviously these are just experience metrics. These, you know, th these are one, these are just several factors of what Google uses to rank a website directly. Obviously things like content, the keywords you're focusing on, the actual search term, backlinks, all of those are still important to uh, ranking well on a website. These are just new signals that, that Google's adding in with these experience metrics. Now, what Google might be doing here, and they're actively testing this, and they're not sure if they're gonna roll this out or not, but they really might, um, is this little indicator next to a search result. And this is gonna tell people that, hey, this is a good experience. It is a star experience and it passes our Web Vitals metrics. And any site owner is gonna want this next to their website directly. And so this is something that, that is gonna be a potential, uh, essentially a carrot uh, that Google is putting out there for webmasters and site owners and anyone uh, who owns a website uh, to try and hit that benchmark and have that little nice icon next to the site itself that this is a good experience um, directly. Now, across the web, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the web is not doing too hot uh, with these metrics. Uh, if you aggregate everything, uh, only 15% of websites actually meet Google's criteria, actually fit into um, these web vitals. The way web vitals works is they look at real world data and uh, they then say, great, do 75% of people who visit your site get a good experience on those three core web vitals? And only 15% of them actually do as of August, 2020. Uh, a lot of people are optimizing for this, so this might've gone up a little bit, but I would highly doubt that this has gone up a lot uh, across the board so far. Um, now, these metrics are just a starting point. Google has announced that they're going to have new metrics that come out every May. That's the same timeline that they're releasing the search engine um, update. And, and so look for these to evolve and subtly change over time. Uh, look for them to try and add new metrics and new things that encompass the entire experience uh, directly. And the last thing I wanted to touch on today is that you know, web, we as web professionals, we need to really be on top of this and be advocating for our customers. This should be something that you are talking to your customers about, you are educating them on and have implemented out of the box. So host service providers, web professionals across the board need to implement this as part of their core of uh, the service or, or tool that they're offering. And you cannot, you absolutely cannot push this off to SMBs. SMBs are not gonna know how to manage this. They're gonna look at these metrics and be confused. They're gonna come to you angry that you're not hitting what a Google best practice might be uh, across the board. So these are things that you need to take into account uh, every single step of the way as you're building and managing a web presence for any uh, small business. 
And finally, this can't be a one-time optimization for web professionals. Uh, these metrics will update over time. And also, if you're not optimizing for this when you release a new feature or for every new capability, you're gonna fall behind pretty quickly. Google has set a high bar with this and they're gonna continue to raise that bar over time uh, to improve across all of the web. Thank you very much for listening today. Really excited that, that you came and learned a little bit about Web Vitals. If you're interested in talking to Duda about this or you wanna learn more, uh, come by our virtual booth. We're really happy to, to have a conversation with you about this. Thanks.